Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us look at how to configure and use a Cassandra database in a Spring Boot application. When you create a Spring Boot project using the IDE or Spring Initializer, add the web and Cassandra starter pack dependencies directly. These are the only dependencies that we need in order to uh, make the Cassandra work in a Spring Boot application. Then let us create a simple model that is going to be our Cassandra table. And then we are going to have a repository interface that is going to be an uh, you know, interface between the Spring application and the Cassandra database. And of course, we will be having a controller which is going to be a REST controller for processing the incoming requests. Let's take a look at the simple table. I have created a model a simple table and it has only three columns id name created time the class has been annotated with at the rate of table simple table to map this particular java object directly with the cassandra's table then at the rate of column indicates that this particular field will be mapped to this particular id field you could also notice that i have two other annotations mentioned here that is at the rate of primary column so in my Cassandra database table, I have created a composite primary key comprising of ID and name. So I have annotated these two fields with at the rate of primary key column where name is equal to ID, the actual ID of the column in the Cassandra database. Ordinal will be the position and the type will be primary key type partition. This primary key type is can be of two types. One is partition and another is cluster. Cluster is for clustering ordering. If you have any column listed as a clustering order, then that has to be mapped here. We don't have one, so it is going to be a partition. Then let us go to the Cassandra repository. In the Cassandra repository interface, I have annotated this interface with at the rate of repository, which will extend the third repository with simple table as the primary object. There is one method in it, find id by name, which will be returning an optional object of spring table and it will take an input of id and name. Then let us go to our controller. In the controller, it is a risk controller with a request mapping slash Cassandra and Cassandra repository auto wired here. I have a post mapping method and a get mapping method. In the post mapping method, we will get the simple table as an input to request body and we are going to save it to the Cassandra database and the saved data will be returned to the end user with the HTTP status. In the get mapping, we are going to query the table, query the database and we are going to get the record and again send it as a JSON request to the end user. The get mapping is going to be a path variable so I'm going to pass in an ID and name as path variables to our get mapping URI. Let us take a look at the application.yaml. In the application.yaml, I have the Cassandra configurations here. My key space name is going to be simple underscore programming. The port is going to be 9042. Contact point is the URI of the Cassandra. In my case, it is localhost. Username password is going to be Cassandra. Username password will be Cassandra by default. If you change it, you can list it out here. If you have the default username and password, you can completely ignore these fields. This particular configuration is provided by the Spring Boot's application properties appendix document. You can take a look at this document and you will find a lot of keys associated with Cassandra configurations. These are the list of Cassandra properties already auto configured by Spring Boot application. This will make life easy for anyone who wants to configure a Cassandra with Spring Boot application. You can see here there's a whole lot of properties. You can take a look at these properties and use them accordingly depending upon your requirement in your project. Let us take a look at our Cassandra database. The Cassandra server is running here and I am in the SQL SH window. I have created a key space simple programming with the replication simple strategy replication factor one. This means that this particular node is going to stay stay in only one data center. I will be doing a detailed tutorial on Cassandra database and let us look at different Cassandra concepts in depth in those videos. For now, I request you to just follow along. After creating a key space, key space is nothing but a schema. 
So after creating a key space, we'll be creating a simple table. The simple table is going to have ID with data type text, name with data type text, created time with data type timestamp. The primary key is also defined here with ID and name. Now let us try to run our application and let us also try to send a request with ID and name and see if the request is getting successfully saved in the Cassandra table or not. For ID, I'm going to use 456 For name, let's use some name, Jack. And I'm going to click on the send button now. So in the model, if you had noticed earlier, we had ID, name and created time. Created time is automatically created uh, in when, when a request comes into our application and is get and will be inserted into the Cassandra table. So in the response, we should be seeing the created time. Let us click on send. So after clicking on send, I have got a response back with the actual element that was stored in the Cassandra database, which is ID name and the created time. Let us quickly go to our Cassandra database and double check this. We see the request that was sent just now. So the data is getting saved successfully here. Now let us go back and try to fetch this data. As mentioned earlier, the get mapping uses path variable to get inputs. Okay, so I'm going to pass in the ID and the name, and I'm going to click on enter. We have got the successful response on the get mapping URI. With this, we have successfully completed connecting our Cassandra database with a Spring Boot application using auto configurations. In my next video, let us see how to manually connect to a Cassandra database in a Spring Boot application. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.